Medical students and welcome to this video where I walk you through the solutions to workbook chapter 9. Now a number of you seem to have had difficulty with this and some of you didn't bother turning it in at all. So I want to start by reminding everyone that we do have our question and answer sessions and that I am available to you via email or if necessary we can even schedule a one-on-one -on -one discussion over Zoom. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you're having trouble, and please reach out to me before turning in an incomplete assignment, skipping the assignment altogether, or simply trying to write random answers into the appropriate answer slots, and then hope for the best. You've got to talk to me. If you're confused, I want to clear that up, but I can't answer questions if you don't ask them. Okay, so let's start by looking at the sample regression output from the main body of the chapter. We haven't gone to the worksheet yet, but basically what we're looking at with this sample regression output is a breakdown of the statistics that you're going to need to pay attention to. So first remember that the first variable listed after the word regress at the top of a regression output is always going to be your dependent variable. So in this sample, the dependent variable is science. And here science represents a test taker's score on the science portion of a standardized exam. The independent or explanatory variables always come after. So in this case, our explanatory variables are math, female, social studies, and read each of which is going to measure the test taker's performance on a particular portion of the exam, except for female, which gauges the gender of the test taker. And I don't know that it's explicitly stated in this workbook for reasons that I hope will become clear by the end of the video, but in this case, female equals one and male equals zero. So keep that somewhere in the back of your mind. All right, now we know what our variables are. We've got science as the dependent variable, and then our explanatory variables are math, female, social studies, and reading scores. What other statistics do we need in order to make sense of the regressions output? Well, that's where we come down to the main body of this table. Now again, right here, you see your dependent variable, and it's gonna be isolated by dotted lines. Notice that that's not true for any of the other variables. So if you don't look at the beginning, you can still figure out what your dependent variable is by finding which of the variables listed in the main body of the diagram is isolated with dotted lines. The COF is the coefficient, as discussed in the chapter, and the P greater than T statistic here indicates your p-value. So each variable in the list of explanatory variables is going to be assigned a coefficient and a p-value. Remember the p-value or p-score is going to give you an indication of statistical significance. And statistical significance indicates the likelihood that there is some relationship between this explanatory variable and the value of the dependent variable. So for example, notice that math here has a p-value of 0 0.000. That then would indicate that there is a 100% probability that there is some relationship between math scores and science scores on this exam. So we would say that the explanatory variable math is statistically significant in predicting the value of a test taker's science score. In other words, we're pretty dang sure that there is at least some relationship between the score that somebody gets on the math portion of the exam and the score that that test taker gets on the science portion of that exam. But we don't know what relationship because the p-value, again, only tells you, it only tells you whether or not there is a statistically significant relationship. It doesn't tell you if there's a substantively significant relationship or what direction that relationship moves in. For that, we're going to have to look at the coefficient. And again, that's here indicated under coef. So each variable in the list of explanatory variables will also be assigned a coefficient. And the coefficient, remember, is going to tell you 
how many units increase you expect to see in the value of the dependent variable for each unit increase in the value of the corresponding explanatory variable. So for example, right here on the math portion of the diagram, we're going to find a corresponding coefficient of 0.389. Basically what that means is that for every unit increase, in the value of the math score, you see a 0.389 value increase in the value of the science score for that test taker. So in other words, if you go from a 97 to a 98 on the math portion of the exam, we can predict that your science score will increase by 0.389. So maybe from 94 to 94.389. I hope that makes sense. And again, if it doesn't, you've got to ask me questions. But note that there is no sign attached to this math coefficient. That indicates that it is a positive coefficient. And therefore, what we know is that the relationship between math and science is direct. In other words, we know there is a relationship because the p-value is lower than 0 0.05, indicating statistical significance. We know the size of the relationship because of the value of the coefficient. And now we know the direction of the relationship because of the sign. If you look down at the next explanatory variable, you're going to find the variable female. And again, female here measures gender. And the way that it is quantified or coded in this particular regression, female is one if the test taker is indeed a woman, and it is zero if the test taker is instead a male. Now, you're going to notice that here our statistical significance measurement under the p-value is 0 0.051. And 0 0.051 is just marginally greater than 0 0.05. So technically, this doesn't quite meet that cutoff. It would not be classified as statistically significant. But when you are this close to that 0 0.05, cutoff, what we're going to find is that most scholars will say that there is a relationship approaching customary measures of statistical significance. For the sake of this example, let's ignore that one. Let's say there's a zero there, so it's 0 0.05. Then that would indicate that there is a statistically significant relationship between the test taker's gender and the test taker's score on the science portion of the examination. Well, here we're going to find that the coefficient has a negative sign, indicating a negative relationship. And what you're going to discover is that if there's a negative relationship, it means that each time you increase the value of the independent or explanatory variable, you decrease the value of the dependent variable by whatever number or value is indicated in the coefficient's value. So here we're going to find that female has a coefficient of negative two. And if you were to then apply this, basically what that's telling you is that assuming there's some relationship between the value of your gender and the value of your science score, we're going to find that going from zero for male to one for female lowers your score on average by two points. In other words, this tells us that if you are a man, on average, you will score two points higher than a female test taker. Now, of course, if we were to say that the independent, or in this case, the explanatory variable female was measured so that zero equals female and one equals male, then the value increases from zero to one when you go from being a woman to a man and here the coefficient is negative. So again, what that would indicate would be that women score higher, men score lower, because the higher the mathematical value assigned to gender or female, the lower your score based on this negative coefficient.
The other independent variables are also going to be reported here. And what you're going to notice is that read also has a p value of 0 0.000. So reading scores are statistically significant as predictors of your science scores. There is a statistically significant relationship between a test taker's performance on the reading portion of the exam and on the science portion of the exam. So we would say that this explanatory variable is statistically significant. And when we're looking at the coefficient, what we're going to discover is that we have a coefficient of 0.33. That means that if you go from a 0 to a 1 on your reading score, then your science score will increase by 0.33 points. Now, a number of you got a little bit confused by this little uh, statistic at the bottom underscore cons. Cons stands for constant and basically I want you to completely and entirely ignore all of the values assigned after the word constant because constant isn't actually a variable and you don't really need to understand what it gauges or why it's here for the purposes of this class or really for the purposes of reading the results of most regressions. Instead here's what I want you to do. I want you to understand that all of the variables have to be listed in the top of the output or they aren't variables included in the regression. So basically if you were to use a statistical analysis software like Stata or SPSS you would type the command regress. Then you would write out the name of your dependent variable, in this case science, and then you would list each of your explanatory variables. Notice that in this list we do have all of the variables but const does not appear. That's because constant is not actually a variable. It's just going to show up in any regression and it's a separate statistical purpose that you don't have to pay attention to here. So really that's what you need to know in order to read the diagram. You need to know that p-value tells you whether there is some relationship. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then yes, there is probably some relationship. If it is greater than 0 0.05, no, there is probably not a relationship. Again, I hope that makes sense to you. But Basically, what I want you to think about is looking at the p-value before you ever even pay attention to the coefficient. Because remember, the coefficient tells you how big the relationship between the variables is if there is a relationship. Whereas the p-value tells you whether or not there's a relationship. If there is no relationship, in other words, if you have a p-value of greater than 0 0.05, there is no statistically significant linkage between the variable on the explanatory side and the variable on the dependent side, then your coefficient becomes meaningless. So for math, you can go ahead and look at the coefficient because it's statistically significant. But if we're looking at female 0 0.051 or better social studies, you can basically ignore the coefficient because the social study score has a p-value of 0.424, which isn't anywhere close to 0 0.05. So we can say with a pretty solid degree of confidence that there's no relationship between how well you do on the social studies portion of this exam and how well you do on the science portion of this exam. So again, that means that you can just ignore the coefficient. Only pay attention to the coefficient or its sign for those variables that are statistically significant, meaning again, the p-value here is lower than 0 0.05. Okay, so we're going to skip over the cross-tabulation portion of this because it wasn't pertinent to the exercise that you completed at the end of the chapter, and because I'm not sure that any of you are going to be running cross-tabulations this semester. But what we are going to find is that in the exercise, you're given another sample output for a regression analysis. And by the way, when I tell you that this is an output, what I mean is that if you were to use a statistical software to run a regression, then this is the type of table that you would get back from that software. So these are what the results of a regression look like when you run that regression in a statistical analysis software like SPSS, R, or Stata. But in this case, we've got some different variables um, and, and, and things are going to look a, a, a little bit different. So you're asked to use the 
output of this hypothetical analysis to basically answer some simple questions. And note that each of the variables measures a student's score on a particular portion of the exam. Uh, again, except for female and uh, general progression in this case. Um, the general progression is their overall level of academic attainment, as I understand it from the source that is linked in this uh, particular chapter. And by the way, if you check out that source, there's a lot of useful information there that might help you to figure all of this out. Uh, here's the bottom line, though. We are, again, running a regression. We know that this is a regression not only because of what the table looks like, but because the word regress is at the beginning of the command line here. And we again know that the particular dependent variable in this analysis is read. How do we know that? Well, because it's the first variable listed, and because again, it's the only variable that's isolated from the others by these here lines. So our dependent variable is read, whereas our explanatory variables are write, gender, which is here labeled female, math, and general academic progress. Okay, so those are our variables. What do these values over here tell you? Well, first, the number of observations tells you how many test takers we're working with, how many observations we had. So remember from designing your own data sets that your observations are basically going to be your respective rows. And for each observation, you are going to assign a value for each variable, and the variables are going to be your column name. Basically, then what this tells you is that the data set they used to create this regression output or the data that they ran this regression on involved 200 rows worth of data in addition to a separate column corresponding to each row for read, write, gender, math, and general academic progress. So this is just the number of observations. And remember, by and large, you want more observations rather than less. And usually, you can't get any results if your total number of observations or n is 50 or lower. Uh, and, and, and that's really stretching it. I, I don't usually recommend running any statistical analysis, especially not a regression, with fewer than 100 or 200 observations. And ideally, you're going to want you know substantially more than that. But this is an acceptable number of observations, so that's good. You can ignore the f prob greater than f uh, values here. They're not relevant to our purposes. But the next value, remember, is your r squared. And the r squared tells you how strong the model is as a whole. Does the model do a good job of explaining the value of the dependent variable? And if you're curious about how to read the R-squared, look back up at the top of the chapter. So the R-squared, remember again, tells you what degree of the variance in the value of the dependent variable is explained by the explanatory variables included. And just like a p-value, it's going to be a proportion. So it's measured from 0 to 1 and cannot assume any negative values. It doesn't make sense to say that you explain negative 1% of the variance in a phenomenon or in the value of a dependent variable. But it does make sense to say that you explain 50% of the variance. Okay, So again, it can't be negative. Uh, but by and large, what we're going to find is that you want a larger r-squared. So you want a smaller p-value, but you want a large r-squared. The r-squared basically tells you that you have explained 100% of the variance of the value in your dependent variable if it is equal to 1. And if it is equal to 0, then you haven't explained any of the variance. In other words, if you have a r-squared value of 1, then you can use your explanatory variables to predict perfectly what the value of your dependent variable is going to be. Whereas if you have a zero for your R squared, you have done a very, very bad job of figuring out which factors influence the outcome you're interested in studying. So you want a high R squared. And if we scroll all the way back down to our exercise, to this sample output that we're looking at, uh, what we're going to find is that we've got a rather middling R squared. This is an acceptable R squared for our purposes in political science. It basically says that we explain about 50% of the variance in the value of the dependent variable. And what that means is that we've 
figured out about half of the relevant factors. And we need to add some other variables in order to strengthen this model to get a better grasp of which explanatory forces cause people to score higher or lower on the reading portion of the exam, because that's our dependent variable. Uh, but again, we've done a decent job. We're, we're, we're okay. Uh, and you could ignore the adjusted R squared or ADH R squared and the root MSE, because those aren't pertinent to you. You can also ignore all of this stuff up here. You don't need to understand what these are telling you in order to really figure out the results of a regression. Uh, then we've got, again, the main body down here where we have our list of variables and each one is going to be assigned a coefficient and a p-value. Ignore the standard error, ignore the t-scored, and ignore the 95% confidence interval values. You don't need to look at those at this level. In a graduate research thesis, you might need to pay attention to those depending on the particular nature of your project. But at an undergraduate level, it's sufficient just to look at the p-value and the coefficients. Okay, So our dependent variable is read. Our explanatory variables are write, gender, which again is just labeled female here, uh, math, and the general academic progress. These are the variables that we're going to look at. Note that this name here appears a little bit different there. That's okay. It's just a labeling, uh, a labeling issue. But just, you know, understand these are our variables. Again, ignore constant. You don't need to pay attention to the underscore C-O-N-S values in the main body of this diagram because constants isn't listed up here and therefore you know it's not actually one of our variables. All right, let's look at the questions and try to figure out what the correct answers to these questions are. So what is the dependent variable in the analysis? Well, again, you know that the answer is read, not only because I've already told you in this video, but because it's the first variable listed here and because it's the only variable isolated from the others by these lines in the main body of the diagram. So reading score is your dependent variable. Uh, what are the explanatory variables? Well, every other variable is an explanatory variable because remember, your independent variable and your control variables are all types of explanatory variable. The independent variable in an analysis is just the explanatory variable you're the most interested in. Statistically, mathematically speaking, it's not treated any differently than any other variables. And so you can more or less uh, just understand that if it's not the dependent variable, it is in fact an explanatory variable. So what are our explanatory variables? Well, the writing score, the gender, the math score, and the general academic progress, which again, you can figure out without even looking down here, because if you go to the top, to that command prompt line, you're gonna find we're running a regression, the command is regress, and then we've got all of our variables listed with reading score, read, the first one being the dependent variable, write, female, math, and progress being the independent or explanatory factors. So we've basically figured out the answer to question one. And I think most of you got that correct. So well done. But if you didn't quite get it, that's okay. You're not alone. There were at least a couple of you that had uh, problems figuring out how to read this diagram. But again, now you should be able to figure it out after having watched this video. Uh, so question two, which of the explanatory variables, if any, have a negative impact on the variable of the dependent variable and which ones have a positive impact? Uh, for now, I want to just start by basically looking at the signs on the coefficients. You're going to notice that the only one of the explanatory variables with a negative sign on its coefficient is female. So you know basically that female is the only one of these variables that could possibly have a negative impact on the value of the dependent variable, the reading score. But remember, before you even begin looking at the coefficients or the signs attached to them, you have to start with the p-value because the p-value is what tells you whether there is a reason to think that there is some relationship. And if you don't have a relationship, it doesn't make sense to start talking about the coefficient because the coefficient measures how big of a relationship is present, if any. And if there is no relationship, you can't say that it's big or small, positive or negative. So let's start by looking at the p-value. 
Well, in this case, what we're going to discover is that the p value or probability score for the independent explanatory factor female is 0 0.015, which you know is less than 0 0.05. Since 0 0.015 is less than 0 0.5, we can say that we are statistically significant in the relationship between female and the value of the dependent variable, which again is your reading score. So we know, yeah, there is some relationship between the two, and since there's a negative attached to this coefficient, we know that it's a negative relationship. Therefore, female has a negative relationship with reading score. What about the positive relationships? Well, all of the other variables have a positive coefficient. So that means that if there is a relationship, it's positive. Therefore, to finish answering this, we go back to the p-value. And any variable other than female, which has a negative coefficient, which has a relationship, is going to have a positive relationship. So the writing score is 0 0.00000 ad infinitum. And again, that means that we are 100% sure that there is some relationship between how well you do on the writing portion of an exam and how well you do on the reading portion. Now that we know that there is a relationship, again, we go to the coefficient. We can see how big that relationship is. For every one point increase in your writing score, your reading score goes up 0.374415 points. So that's a decent coefficient and we know for sure there's a relationship the coefficient is positive therefore it's a direct relationship it has a positive impact increasing the writing score increases the reading score contrast that with female this has a negative coefficient so decreasing the value assigned to the variable female is actually going to increase the value assigned to read increasing the value assigned to female will decrease the value of read the value of these two variables is going to move in opposite directions because there's a negative coefficient, whereas the value of the variable write is going to move in the same direction as the variable read because it's a positive coefficient. Your math score also has a statistically significant p-value of 0 0.0000, and therefore we can say, yeah, there's some relationship since the coefficient is positive we do know then that the uh, relationship is positive. Uh, what about general academic progress? Uh, well, this p-value is 0 0.878, which is greater than 0 0.05. So there is no relationship. If there were a relationship, the positive coefficient would definitely go ahead and tell you that, yeah, okay, so there is a positive relationship. But you can't have a positive relationship if you don't have a relationship at all. So there we go. Uh, that's going to allow us to answer the second portion of the questions on this exam. But what about question number three? Which of the variables have a statistically significant impact on the DV? Well, we've actually already answered that, but remember it's any of the variables with a p-value of less than 0 0.000, or I'm sorry, of 0 0.05. So 0 0.000, that's less than 0 0.05 writing is going to be one variable that's statistically significant and predicting the value of the dependent variable. Female, 0 0.015, again that's statistically significant. Your general academic progress, that's 0.878, that's not significant. Uh, and I accidentally skipped over the math score here, uh, that's 0 0.0000 as well, and 0 0.000 is less than 0 0.05, so this is statistically significant. Um, then we move on to the uh, fourth question. To what extent do the results of this regression support the hypothesis that men will tend to generate higher reading scores? Well, this is why uh, I kind of left the value or measurement of the variable here gauging gender ambiguous because the correct answer to this question is I don't know. You can't figure out whether the results of this regression support that hypothesis until you know how they measured the variable female. In this case, the variable is equal to zero if the test taker is a man and one if the test taker is a woman. So what that means is that if you are a woman, you get a value of one. If you're a man, you get a value of zero. And if this value goes from zero to one, then your reading performance drops by 2.69884 points, or let's round up and say three points. So in other words, what this is telling us is that 
female test takers on average score about three points less than male test takers. Now again, that is on average. That doesn't mean that every woman does worse than every man on this test, but it does support the hypothesis that in general, men will perform better. Women will perform worse. But again, you can only figure that out if you know how they measured female because it's equally possible that a researcher will assign the variable gauging gender a one for male and a zero for female in which case this would tell us that going from zero to one in other words going from being a female to a male test taker moving from a female test taker to a male test taker results in on average a two point deduction in your reading score so the correct answer here is I don't have enough information to answer that question and if you really wanted to impress me you would have explained why and I think that there were maybe one or two of you who did adequately answer this question uh, but if you said that it supports the hypothesis I would have given you full credit anyway because that's true again under the fairly safe assumption that since the variable is called female it gives a value of one to the gender when the test taker is a woman and a value of zero to the test taker when they are male all right so that's going to be a walkthrough of how to read a regression output Again, watch this in conjunction with your lecture material and with all of your reading assignments and any of your additional resources that have been made available to you here or elsewhere on Blackboard. I hope this is helpful. Again, I'm going to implore each and every last one of you, if you have questions, you have to ask me. I can only help you if you reach out. All right, have a nice week.